Welcome back to the Ireland Travel Vlog Series. In this episode, we are going to explore the Aran Islands and Cliffs of Moher. First, we drove to Doolan to catch the ferry that would take us to Inishir, the closest island to the mainland. After a rocky 25-minute boat ride, we landed. Some people turned it into an overnight trip, while many used this visit as a day trip. The Aran Islands are a hidden treasure nestled off the western coast of Ireland. With their rugged landscapes, vibrant culture, and warm-hearted locals, these three captivating islands, Inishmoor, Inishman, and Inishir, beckon you to embark on an unforgettable adventure. We will be spending a few hours on Inishir, which is the smallest island and also the one closest to the mainland, just to get a taste of what the Aran Islands have to offer. To maximize our time, we hopped on a tour wagon for 10 euros per person. Not a bad price if it means efficiency. I couldn't get over the rugged coastlines and the charming farmhouses. Apparently, they have fast internet here, and some people choose to work remotely from this island. Hmm, that may be my second career. You also could pay for a horse carriage. We made it to our first stop, which is the Plassey Shipwreck. In the 1960s, the ship was carrying yarn, glass, and whiskey when it got caught in a storm and washed along the coast. Don't worry, the crew survived and now the remains of the ship is a testament of the bravery of the people on the island who participated in the rescue. Off into the distance is the Cliffs of Moher. We'll be visiting it later in the day. That was the end of our wagon tour, which led us off at some high point on the island. The rest of the island is walkable, especially to the center of town to catch the ferry back to the mainland. This is the temple in the cemetery. We had heard there was a castle on the island, so of course, we had to go looking for it. It was a bit of a climb up the hill, but we arrived at O'Brien Castle. I was surprised how relatively well preserved it was, and how much of the castle you can explore on your own. Some more of these stone walls. I don't know how they pieced them together. This is a unique looking horse. I've never seen a horse with this kind of mane and, wait, does it have a mustache? That's the lighthouse. If we had more time, we would have gotten closer to it, but we didn't want to miss our ferry back. Just a reminder, we're in the middle of the ocean, so of course there's a beach where you can relax. In the center of the main town, there are hotels, shops, and restaurants to patronize. Mm -hmm. 
Some more horse carriages, but we're close enough to the port where we can walk the rest of the way. The water is so clear that you'd think I was in the Caribbean. I had to do a double take there for a moment. It's back to Doolin Pier. We catch a view of the cliffs and more from the boat. I don't know. The view was all right, and I wish our boat had gotten closer. However, it was running behind time, so I think they were trying to rush back to get to the port. Hey, I'll take whatever views I get. It's still pretty spectacular from this vantage point. back to Doolin Pier in one piece. On our way back to our car, we bumped into a cattle crossing. Let's move along. I wasn't satisfied with seeing the cliffs of Moor from the ocean, so luckily it was a short drive from the port to walk along its edges. There was an entrance fee to the cliffs of Moor Visitor Center which gets you parking, vista points, shops, toilets, but most importantly, you can get on the cliff walk for even better views. The area around the visitor center is well paved and an easy walk. However, you should know by now that we don't do things the easy way. We took heed of the warning signs and ventured along the rocky cliffs. Don't worry, it was pretty safe for the most part. As you set foot on this remarkable coastal trail, prepare to be transported to a realm of sheer magnificence, the Cliffs of Moor, situated on the western edge of Ireland, stand tall and proud, showcasing nature's artistic prowess at its finest. Towering over 700 feet over the Atlantic Ocean, these majestic cliffs are an emblem of Ireland's untamed allure. Spectacular views unfold before your eyes, revealing a tapestry of vibrant green landscapes, dramatic cliffs cloaked in emerald hues, and the relentless dance of waves crashing against the rocks below. The path went a lot further, but we turned around because we needed to drive to Galway before it gets dark. We were rewarded with my favorite shot of the day, which is a rainbow at the Cliffs of Moor. I felt the magic of the cliffs. The Cliffs of Moor offer more than just breathtaking views. They are a gateway to a world steeped in history and folklore. Learn about the rich heritage of this region where legends and tales are passed down through generation. Here's O'Brien's Tower, which was built in the 1830s as a tourist attraction to the area. Yet, I can't imagine why they would need a tourist attraction to draw visitors. I think the views are plenty enough. With that, we had a lovely day exploring the rustic beauty of Ireland's western coast on one of the Aran Islands and on the Cliffs of Moor. They are a testament to the sheer power and beauty of the natural world, reminding us of our place in the grand scheme of things. Now on to Galway in my next video. Mm -hmm.